Have you ever wondered what it's like living in South Africa? Do you want to know the truth about living in South Africa? Well, if you want to know a little bit more about South Africa, Cape Town, Korea, Joburg, come into the office with me here today and let's go and chat about South Africa. What is it that I want to talk to you about? Well, I want to tell you about the things that happen when you live in South Africa. Because when you come here as a holiday maker, you obviously find all these friendly people and all the lovely things that you see. And you go to the game reserves and you see the nature, uh, which we have a lot of nature. We have a lot of nice things. We have a lot of nice things to do. And if you're at the coast in Cape Town, we've got beautiful beaches. We've got beautiful everything actually nice town nice wine farms all the things that you could possibly dream of to go and visit but the truth about south africa is we've also got a lot of crime we've also got a lot of underlying issues and problems and there's a lot of things that we have to concern ourselves with for example if you live in the northern part of south africa like the joburg toria those sort of areas we suffer immensely from crime we take a lot of pain there's a hell of a lot of crime in those areas now we've just had an election where we've had a new government of national unity that's coming into play and they're busy arguing at the moment about who gets what position in parliament and that sort of thing and i'm pretty sure that's all been designed already and all decided and they've all figured out what they want to do long ago long before i come along and make all these decisions my point being that what i've seen in the last week or two since the election is there's a lot of money coming back into the country because people are more positive about what's happening. The RAND is strengthening because what they're seeing is a new South Africa. What they're seeing is government of national unity, which would be a very fair multinational government, multi multiracial government as well. In other words, everyone coming together. So the few racists on the left and the few racists on the right can all go to hell because at the end of the day, the majority of us want a rainbow nation. The majority of us want a better country and a safer country to live in. We don't want to live in the slums. We don't want to be without jobs. We don't want to uh, have crime all around us all the time. We're a bit sick and tired of it. And we're also a bit sick and tired of being sidelined or marginalized or whatever the case within the country. Everybody who's a citizen in the country, everyone who lives in the country, in fact, even the immigrants, should feel safe, should feel like they can get work, should feel like they can have a good life? Why should they be marginalized? Why should they feel out? I myself, I'm actually very positive about this new government of national unity. The big question is, will they be able to move it forward? Will they be able to do something positive and will they be able to make it better? Will they be able to turn this into a positive and great future for our country? Because if they mess it up, it's probably going to be worse in the next election than it was in the previous elections. Because we were heading down a slippery slope. We were heading down a slide into a, a government that was very much like the apartheid government, almost very racist and separatist and on their own and looking after their own kind and forgetting about everyone else in the country. Now, this has woken everybody up to the fact that we're not going to stand for this anymore. We as South African people want a multinational multiracial country. We want a country that includes everyone, not just the few or just may be the majority. Even that majority has come into this new majority of people that want a society that everyone works together in, that everyone enjoys, that everyone can be something in. The reality of South Africa is we struggle with things like electricity. Now, before the election, we had load shedding flat out for about a year. Now, if you don't know what load shedding is, it's because they don't have enough power in the country to supply everyone with electricity so they cut your electricity off for a couple of hours a day a couple of times so maybe two hours in the morning two hours in the afternoon two hours in the evening six hours a day sometimes eight hours a day sometimes four hours a day depending on the situation now the, the thing with that is 30 years ago ESCOM which is our electricity provider was providing electricity to the whole of Africa or many parts of Africa now they can't even provide to their own country and you know a lot of it seems to have been to do with a lot of corruption and a lot of stealing and a lot of theft so this has become a problem right through most of the institutions that we have in south africa the trains the transport systems the saa the airways everything has gone pretty much down the tubes as a result of poor management and corruption. Now after the election, running up to the election, they stopped with the load shedding and they somehow sorted that out. 
but somehow took care of it. Maybe they arrested the people that were causing problems, who knows? And now we're getting a better run and the electricity has actually been on since before the election and it's still on now. Touch wood, because it can change at any minute and go back to the way it was and we don't want that. Let's hope that we've got a, a much better future in South Africa because the reality is we don't want the load shedding, we don't want the shortages and we want a much better future living together. So next time, let's see if we can talk about the electricity in South Africa and where it's going and if we've had any load shedding yet and if it's going to affect us in any way. Guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to watch the last video. Cheers, thanks and...